You are watching uh, Ear Ground, and my name is Mabuto Boaz Kumete, aka King Boaz. And uh, today we have Yvonne Dube. This is a lady that has defied the odds. So I will try and allow her to, to take us through the journey and get to understand what she's about. Yvonne, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mabuto. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so to start off with, maybe if we can go back and uh, look at your childhood. Uh, how was your childhood? Before you we talk about what happened when you were 13, maybe let's look at your childhood. How did you spend your days? What used to happen? Did you, what was the Lama Tobi? Yeah, my childhood was very, very nice. Uh, I grew up in an environment full of love. I was the last born. My right. mom and my dad I was always mama's baby. Yeah. Yeah, I tried here and there with Lama Tobe with others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to like a lot, uh, a lot of running around the house. or yeah. about active kid. All right. Yeah. My even at school, I used to be someone who, who was doing most of the sports. All right. So that part when. When I became thirteen. Yeah. All right. So, 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 uh, sometime when you were thirteen, uh, I suppose that was in two thousand and three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, you had a sudden uh, paralysis. How did this day uh, come about? Maybe if you can take us back to to this day. What really happened? How do you remember this day? I remember just waking up early in the morning. It was a weekend. So when I was trying to get out of the bed, then my right side, I tried everything, and then my leg was just numb. So I decided to to roll out of the bed and crawl to my mother's bedroom to ask her. And then when I went there, my mom just started crying, and then she just invited some relatives over to come and pick me to go to the hospital. Then when I got to the hospital, that's when I realized it was an natural thing. I had become paralyzed. All right. So for, for how long uh, did you stay at the, at the hospital? Uh, I think I stayed for like two weeks. I was trying physiotherapy. So, but the more I tried physiotherapy, my body just became so weak. So the doctors were like, no, this is who you are now. You have to accept it. All right, I can, I can imagine how how that was. So, how did this change your life um, from from the active uh, days from from someone who was always running, from someone who was always doing all these things? How did this affect your life? It really changed me a lot. It changed even my dreams, everything, even going back to school. Like afterwards, I couldn't go back to school. As now, someone was always in bed crying. And uh, I became so depressed that each time I go to the hospital, I'll be admitted because of depression. Yeah. All right. And then uh, with all this uh it seems like the, 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 the world has turned its back on you, but you rose up and became uh, a fish and a crocodile farmer. How did you pick this profession? Uh, or maybe if, before we get to, to picking this profession, uh, did you dream of anything else different from, from B 
being a fish in the in the farm and the crocodile basin. Uh, like during my my grade six, grade five years, I used to dream of being a pilot and a doctor. Oh, I right. never, never thought I would be a crocodile trainer. I would yeah. never thought of it. It was something which came as a blessing when I was in the hospital. Yeah. So I don't say I chose it. It chose me. In fact, I believe it's a calling from God. God yeah. called me through my paralysis. Yeah. Uh, so, so how did this happen? How did this happen? You're in the hospital, and then uh, suddenly you're thinking fish up, you're thinking crocodiles, and then you're saying, "Yeah, I want to be a crocodile right. farmer." <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it. Like I was yeah. laying in the bed, and then yeah. there's this lovely couple which was coming from Australia. Then yeah. they like to me, they were coming, they were visiting everyone in the world. So they brought to me by the time of fit, I think I was like. 17. Then they were like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, uh, I just came here, I've got headache. It's cause of depression. Then they're like, depression at your age? I'm like, yeah. Then I started narrating my story to them. So it was just narrating my story, just telling them. It's like I, I was sharing a story, not knowing that they would change my life to something else. They're like, from today, you are our daughter. Do you, right. Would you love to go back to school? I'm like, no, I'm 17. You think I can go back to form one? They're like, no, something different. I'm like, what? Because I tried, like, I'll go, I tried fashion and designing. Uh, when I was working in town, I fell when I was using my crush at the time. So I was yep. telling them that, so that I can't go to school. If I'm going to school, someone has to drive me to school and leave me by the gate. Because I was almost hit by a by car when I was trying to do that. They're like, no, don't worry. We've got something different. We don't know whether you are someone who's scared. I'm like, there's people that they talking about. Yeah. Then they're like, do you know fish farming? In fact, they introduced me. They when they introduced they were, they were introducing the course, they're like, it's about fish farming. Oh. Then later on, when I was done my fish farming management, uh, they called me, they're like, no. We think fish farming, aquaculture will become so common. We want you to do something different. Nice. Yeah. Which is crocodile farming. That's when oh. I flew to South Africa. All right. And then to my course. You flew to South Africa and then I suppose this probably was the first time when you when you had to see a crocodile or be, be up close with a crocodile. Were you not afraid of crocodiles? Because I don't think I can be close to a crocodile. I, I will need a gun or something to... to, mm, to Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary. I don't want to lie. It was scary. It was yep. scary. But then the person, uh, it's Mr. Haitia. Yep. He told me, he was like, the time you show this crocodile that you have got fear, it will attack you. That's one thing people do. When you have got yep. fear, that's when it attacks you. Because it also have like feelings, it senses when you've got fear. Yeah. So he told me like the first day I was like, no, just stand there because I can see I've got fear. Yeah. Or so I stood far away and then I was like, tomorrow I would love you to, to kangle that crocodile for me. Wow. So the whole night I was so nervous. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I doing here? If I come to commit suicide with crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> But then I overcame the fear. I prayed the whole night. And God yeah. gave me strength and courage. Ah, nice. All right. And then uh, you did uh, fish farming and crocodile farming for, for quite some time. And then you recently became a crocodile trainer. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank but, uh, before we get into the training part, do you eat these crocodiles? I have only ate crocodile meat once, just right. once. I I cry at times when they are slaughtering a crocodile because now it's all in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, when I saw that you 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 a crocodile trainer, uh, the first female crocodile trainer in Africa in the whole continent, you are the only uh, female crocodile trainer. My question is, 
how do you get to train a crocodile? For what event? Why are you training a crocodile? Maybe if we can talk about that before we we, we get into in, in, into the the qualification itself. Okay, you train crocodile mostly. They are trained for breeding. All right. Uh, those people who sell the crocodile skin, so they are trained while at least they are babies. You have to nature them just like any other baby. All right, all right. You come with them, you feed them until they are ready to go to their dens, small dens or ponds. Yeah, all right. So so what does it involve, uh, this this training? Uh, how long does it take if, if anyone has an interest in say, I want it sounds interesting, it sounds adventurous to train a crocodile. What does it involve? to become a, a crocodile trainer? Uh, it involves courage, lots of courage. Yeah. You just have to have lots of courage, no qualifications, just your courage. Wow, wow. I don't know if if if, if, if I will live to have that courage. Yeah. You should, <laughs> you should be <laughs> men. <laughs> you should uh, all right, and then if 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 you go, let's say you 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 go to a dam and there are crocodiles coming your way or anyone, does this courage help? Do these crocodiles, like in the wild, how would you advise a person to deal with this? Maybe under attack, there is a crocodile coming your way. Are they always that dangerous, or is there anything that people can do to try and save themselves and make sure that they? get away and head from such a situation? Uh, usually when you're being attacked, make sure that you remove fear and try to hold the, the tail. And then you go up, 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 up. But most people, they like, they fail and get eaten after they do that. So I wouldn't advise anyone, especially in the dens. Yeah. Because those in the dens, they are wild. They are different from what I train. They are wild crocodiles. They are those which can be friendly. All right, all right. I see. So, um, you you you've come from a situation that looked like it was hopeless. It looked like your life was going to be spent dealing with depression and uh, finding it hard to to move around and all that. Uh, how would you advise someone who's also in a situation that is hopeless or against all odds to try and approach life or to try and believe that they can do something about their life. There's God in heaven. Sometimes some situations like they come, they come with the blessing. You'll be yeah. thinking it's 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 you only. You're living there. You're just God has given you a situation. You have had an accident or you've become paralyzed forever but God has a purpose for everyone so oh. having faith in God and praying more and I'll encourage them to have to have this thing you're good uh, I can do this even after even after I'm paralyzed or even after I've had an accident yeah all right yeah and then now we we the, the whole world is faced with the uh, COVID-19, they are all different levels of lockdown, different measures that they have put in place around the world. How has this affected your work and how do you spend your days? Uh, it has affected my work somehow, well, especially the side, pro, the side side, but I do online training for fish farming. All right. So I do online workshops Though it's affected, but not too much. I thank God for that, that my industry is not affected that too much, especially in the fish farming sector. I've been doing workshops online. That's how I spend my day. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we will come to, to the future. What does the future hold for you? What level do you want to go? Now you're the first female crocodile trainer. Congratulations on that. And then Thank what is it that uh, you would want to achieve? What is the next step? 
after I got the nominee of being the first female crocodile trainer, I decided to open an organization. All right. Which helps people with disability, helps uh, poor community. So yeah. I'm just praying God helps me for me to give more in the community than I give than I give to myself. Because oh. I want to train more people like me who are in my same who are in the same situation I, I was. That's why oh. the future holds. I don't want to be selfish because God didn't become selfish when I needed Him. He became selfless and came through for me. All right. So in, in case anyone would like to help uh, to this cause, anyone wants to support your organization, what's the name of the organization and uh, how do they get in touch? My organization is called Talak Foundation. Uh, they can contact us via Facebook and via, via our page is called Talak Foundation. All right. Or my page how my personal blog, which is called Maria Yvonne Duge. All right. Yeah. On 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 the on, on, on the name, maybe if you can spell that because sometimes people because of different accents and different dialects, people won't uh, be able to 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 know what exactly the page looks like. So if you can spell the name of the organization. T S A L A C H. All right. I hope uh, people Allah. got Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, Yvonne. We wish you all the best with the organization. We wish you all the best with your career. We thank you for your story of hope. hope. We hope that someone was encouraged. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. This was Ear Crown, and my name is King Boas. Until next time, cheers.